Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads and must converse is the channel. Today, I'm uh, crashing the uh, book club party. Scott, uh, Steve Donahue and uh, Matthew over at Mayberry Book Club are doing a read-along, or doing a, a, a book club of two, uh, now it's three, baby, uh, reading Kingdom Come by Alex Ross and Mark Wade. This is an amazing story arc that stands on its own in the wider DC universe. Uh, it does not fit into canon or the continuity of the storylines in the, in the wider DC universe. It is done as its own thing. Think of, uh, you know, Brian K. Uh, Vaughn's uh, Joker, you know, Arkham Asylum uh, kind of thing. You know, the Joker uh, series, you know, one-off storyline that he did. Very, very cool. Um, it's it's an it's an amazing uh, book, story wise, but base, but more so because of the artwork. Alex Ro Alex Ross is a freaking master. Alex Ross uses live models for his uh, for his illustrations, and it really shows this hyper realistic. Um, here's some sketches here at the back. We'll show. And, and I love it. I, I came into contact with Alex Ross from his Marvels series that he did where he took Marvel storylines that everybody is pretty much familiar with if you if you read any comics from back in the day. The X-Men Sentinels uh, storyline, story arc. The Fantastic Four story arc where Galactus and Silver Surfer are coming to Earth. That... And he takes those story arcs and he does them and t with a twist. It's very, very cool. Spider-Man is there. There's so many. And Alex Ross is a master at putting these little Easter eggs in all over the place. One of the things that, uh, that popped out at me right at the beginning is even in this DC story arc here, we have... Um, our, our character walking th through the city and he is passing a storefront and in the storefront is books right books and things like that and right here you see <laughs> Under the Hood by Hollis Mason um, anybody who is not aware Hollis Mason is the Night Owl the original Night Owl from Watchmen. So he's actually uh, calling out even other uh, comic book heroes and stories and things in this uh, while he's doing something original with the DC Universe. The artwork in here is beautiful. The storyline is very, very cool. I will say that it, you can get something out of it out, out, off of every read. This is definitely one to pick up, even because I, I don't get too, into graphic novels too much. I don't um, I don't like to spend the money on them because I can read them so fast, and then they just kind of sit. And it is not it's not really you know cost efficient to to go for graphic novels comics, but this storyline is that these new superheroes, not superheroes, but new overpowered, superpowered beings have kind of ar arisen in the wake of the Justice League retiring. There's, there's not much by way of supervillains. The Justice League disbands because Superman gives up after Magog, another uh, newer, newer hero, comes up um, and actually kills the Joker. Kills the Joker uh, where when Superman would not, and he is acquitted. He's put on trial for murder, and he is acquitted. It says, justice prevails, and Superman quits. Well, in the rise of these <laughs> beings coming and wreaking havoc, um, he, is, he is appealed upon by the Wonder Woman to come back, and he does. But now he's like 
the world's policeman, right? And he's got the Justice League, most of the Justice League, the Flash, uh, Wonder Woman's there, Hawkman is all there. And they are, you know, basically being the world police right now. And and it is it is not his role to play. You know, he's not very comfortable there, but this is what the world needs, and nobody is really happy with it. The human beings uh, that are, that are like, you know, the world leaders here at the UN are these kind of controllers uh, level of humans. They don't like it because they want the power and the, and the control, right? Um, another one that really doesn't like it is our boy Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Batman doesn't like it. So he's, uh, he's got, you know, kind of enemies on all sides. Along with the humans and Batman and Batman's little crew here that he's putting together that have their own plan that we're not too sure about in the first two stories here. We also have Lex Luthor. <laughs> and he has in, his, uh, in here with him a uh, Catwoman and the Riddler. And he has a butler... <laughs> who is here, who uh, you might be able to, by the front, see who we're, uh, who might, who might rear his head in this. Um, but we haven't seen yet the main showdown. What is going on is that the Justice League is here uh, stopping these wild, new, uh, super-powered beings from wreaking more havoc in the world. And looking to get Magog. Magog is a is is the guy who killed the Joker for sure. But what has happened is he has been leading a group of these new wild uh, super powered beings that don't have any responsibility for their actions. They're just kind of uh, you know loose cannons, and they ha by an accident, but an accident you know but it happens nonetheless set off a nuclear explosion in the center of the United States. And it destroys Kansas and some of the surrounding uh, states as well, a par portion of the surrounding states as well. And he is basically out there in Kansas now suffering because it's his fault, you know. But he is pushing the, pl the blame onto Superman, saying, well, it's your fault. It's your fault that I'm in this place because you left... I didn't ever want to be the the you know the the guy. You're the guy. You're the man. Okay, you're Superman. Okay, I'm I'm I, I was just willing to do what you wouldn't do, and then since I was able to do it, and the human beings picked me to take care of, uh, you know, the bad guys. You left. You 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 abandoned us. So you put me in this position, and. When it comes down to it, Superman is looking all over the place for what are his options. What can they do? They've approached Aquaman by Wonder Woman's behest to see if they can have an underwater, under the ocean kind of prison to put the superpowered beings that will not, uh, you know, fall in line and not behave under their no no dice. Uh, Aquaman says, you know, I, I, I don't have any stake in this. I have my own problems. I have my own things going on. Go somewhere else. He, he goes to Apocalypse and talks to Darkseed's son, who now runs Apocalypse, this horrifying world. And he says, no, you know, I, I, can't, I can't do anything for you. But what I can do is, uh, is, is give you a... A, a containment facility. So we have two uh, two beings from Apocalypse that are going to work with the Justice League and build this giant containment facility called a Gulag out in Kansas, out in the place where this uh, this nuclear explosion has happened. And the part two ends very very uh, highly. And so I won't uh, I won't spoil it. Uh, Stephen Stephen Matthews uh, videos will be linked into the description box if you want to 
get more of the story and all that. I just wanted to kind of turn you on and let you know that I'm here to play, boys. <laughs> Catch you on the next one, BookTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.